primates are amazing animals. Absolutely amazing animals. They are some of the most intelligent animals that we have. But it is horrific how many people keep these animals and how much cruelty is involved with keeping primates as pets. A dog loves you. A cat thinks about if it loves you, it depends on whether you've got food or not, but they, they actually benefit from living in a household situation with you, so it's a mutually beneficial type of uh, pet ownership. Whereas with wild animals, you have to keep them in a cage. They generally are very destructive because it's a natural behaviour, they can um, become very aggressive, they can start harming themselves, they've got this whole string of problems that they have because they are not supposed to be in a house. The first monkey I had was a marmoset, a little white ear male, or the correct name for it is a white tufted male, um, and it just escalated from there. The reason why I got into it was I, my first son that I had, unfortunately I lost, and after his death I needed to fill a void. Hey little papa, ooh, mama's got nunus here, oh she nanas, mama's got nunus there, there we go. With keeping marmosets as pets, if you really love animals, you won't do it. Because there is no way that private individuals in a household can keep a marmoset in any way that it should be kept. People are generally well-meaning. They don't mean to be cruel. They don't mean to cause problems, but it's not what's best for that animal. You need to think of what's best for that animal. Don't be selfish. Don't think about what you want. There we go. Come on. Oh, and he's eating mommy's nails. He loves mommy's. They love shiny things and pretty things. This is one of my little babies that I'm hand rearing. Well, he's not a baby anymore. He's also not a baby anymore. Here we go. You must show them how we play hide and seek. Come. We must play hide and seek. There we go. We're hiding. Where we are. Where we? Where we? Where we? There we go. Where we? Where we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are you hiding? Where? I'm looking. I'm seeing. I'm seeing you. The sanctuary how it operates is we rely on donations from the public. Um, there's no help as far as the government is concerned. We actually look after a lot of monkeys, exotic monkeys primarily. It's your marmosets, tamarinds, and uh, capuchin monkeys, squirrel monkeys as well. Basically, any exotic monkey that comes in uh, comes in for specific reasons, and that's what I do. I've been doing that for nearly 30 years already. You see, being gumnivores, they gouge their teeth into the sticks, then they mark the the place where they gouge the holes in, and that's where their teeth get um, loose. When I was a practicing veterinary nurse, I worked mainly with exotic animals and wild animals at either um, specialist veterinary practices or at some zoo situations. And throughout that work, I realized the horrific amount of cruelty that's involved with um, the wildlife and exotic wild animal um, industry, albeit keeping them in captivity or the pet trade or the variety of different uses for these animals. So the, the cruelty that I saw always affected me deeply and I always knew that I wanted to try and do something to help these animals and possibly to address um, the shortcomings in the law and enforcement and try and make South Africa a better place for these, for these animals. I've got two cats, um, love them dearly and they are kind of like second ranked in the house if I can put it in inverted commas because the monkeys totally rule. Oh, we've got beautiful babies here. Yes, we do. Hello, my lovies. And there's going to be no fighting, eh? You're all going to get one. No fighting, eh? Okay. Here we go. Tristan and Jesse and Skylar and little Calliope. And there we go, Sebastian. Oh, nice. So all the monkeys, they stay here, they are looked after in every way possible um, and that's how, how we operate. Benji is pretty old, he's about 13 years old now and healthy. Um, Goosebump, oopsie, where are you Goosebump? Okay, Jane. Goosebump. 
Yeah. This bomb. There we go. Look what I got. Look. Benji. Oh, there's Jane. Hello, Jane. Would you like one? Mm. Hey, Jane. Mm. Come, baby. I've worked at some of the top exotic um, at wild animal practices and I can, without a doubt, say 98% of every single monkey that came into that clinic was due to human negligence. When a monkey comes in and it's been bitten by a dog um, or it comes in and it's hardly got any hair on it, uh, because of nutritional reasons and mainly a lack of, of, of knowledge on the owner's part. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's heart-rending, it really is, and I've got to try and save those monkeys. And yes, you cry every time you lose a monkey. I've got Bella for her checkup. Okay, let's put her over here. Mmm, feisty one, this one. <laughs> I remember last time that she got out. She's so strong. Okay. Um, I presume, is this now the follow-up because I had to remove the tooth, it was yes, rotten? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, the swelling's gone down. Okay, good. Um, she's good. still eating and everything. Right. I've changed her diet. Okay, good. And um, no muck over the eye anymore. Okay, fantastic. And the, the bump has gone down? bump has gone down. There's it, no swelling. Over. Okay, because as we know, with tooth abscesses, the bump under the eye, most people don't realize it is actually from a rotten tooth. Sorry, my girl, I'm going to have to catch you. Melissa, in the meantime, can I ask you just to open the other injection um, just so that we can let her bite on that so I can actually have a good look at her, at her gums. Right, Bella. How old is Bella? Bella now? is a year and a half. Yeah. Okay, so yes, so she's sexually mature. Hmm. Okay, Bells, I know. Where are you? Very clever monkey. I want to check whilst we got her, I want to just take a coloration of the gums and the tongue. And any... She's eating fine. Yeah, hey, eating fine. hey that... It is slightly red in the corner. But no fine. She's fine. There's no swinging. There's no swinging. It's gone totally down. Wonderful. So, let's go. Oh, yes. Okay, let's open the gut. Okay. Tooth is out. It's looking like the tooth next to it is a little bit discolored. We're going to have to watch that. Not really very much, no, no swelling, not as much as last time. So that's good. Okay, how's she eating? Very well. Good. Very well. She's got sharp claws, eh? <laughs> okay. Certainly very strong. The canines are the ones that you need to really watch out for. The canines are the ones that tend to get uh, rotten. Um, those teeth are nice and sweet. It can certainly cause a bit of there. Alright, I'm going to put my finger there. Okay, that's good. They're not made to live in a nappy in a cage, in a house. They're not made to, and they can't cope with living like that because they will suffer and they will get abnormal psychological behaviors. They will get um, physical effects from it. So it's just, it's a really cruel thing to do to keep a primate as a pet. Very clever. He's going for the marshmallows now. He's like, meat, meat, come, 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 He's still deciding. Because there's, there's strange people here. There we go, Porky. Come. There's your thing. Come.
they're incredibly social. Uh, many owners don't realize that. They're not single, single pets. They, um, although they're so human-like, um, they are certainly very sociable. They need to groom. They need to play around. Uh, they play hide and seek. They hide in the, um, in the grass. They love to forage. They spend a large proportion of their time foraging and grooming each other. So they, their social well-being is absolutely imperative. They have to have one another. Even if they have, even if they're with a tamarind, the mamas is with tamarinds, they still have that interaction with each other, and that's vital. Just focusing on your marmoset monkeys, the diets that they need. Marmosets are actually fascinating. They've got the, their bottom teeth form like a cup, and they actually use that to scrape trees, and they um, drink rely on the sap from trees. So um, that's one of their main diets in the wild. Also insects, some fruits and berries. So in captivity, you need to try and replicate that diet. So you can get something called acacia gum powder, which is a powder that you mix up, which um, replicates the tree sap that they're having. You'll need to feed them um, a high protein, which is your insect-based um, feeds, and then a fruit-based. And then there's also formulated, specially formulated pellets that you can get for monkeys, which has all of their nutritional needs packaged into a pellet. The problem is, so your average Joe Marmoset owner is going to feed them Coca-Cola, yogurt, jelly beans, coffee, all the delicious, extremely high sugar, but really, really, really unhealthy food, which is just, without a doubt, going to cause sickness in these animals. Marmalade, where are you, honey? Where's Marmalade? Did you, did you not get your sweetie, Marmalade? Oh, my word. Now look at the problem we've got there. There we go. There we go. Grabby, 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 grabby hands. There we go. He's trying to get it off. He took it. He stole it. He stole Mavi. Choo choo choo. Baby, come talk to me. Choo 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 choo. The diet has to be varied. You've got to have your proteins, your carbohydrates, your fruits, vegetables, um, you know, vitamins and minerals. Absolutely essential when they are in captivity. And a lot of people don't realize how varied it's supposed to be. This is one of the foods I'm going around and I check all the food that they still got enough food. We've got chicken, obviously all proteins are cooked. We've got mixed vegetables, we've got dry mix which consists of a variety of dry cereals, pumpkin, potato they've eaten, banana they've already eaten, the rice and then every day they get the, the cereal, Cerulac or Nestum or Ace mixed with lactogen little bits of milk and Vidalin baby drops for the vitamins and minerals added into here. So that's their food that they get. Every day is different because they get bored easily, just like what we do. They have to have protein, they have to have their fruits and their vegetables, they have to have their porridge. You basically use your baby cereals. Try to keep the gluten side away from it, try to stick to gluten free and lactose free. People don't buy a monkey because they respect it as a wild animal with behavioural needs. They buy it because they think it's cute and they think it's like a baby. So they want to treat it like a human or like a baby. So they want to dress it up, they want to feed it sweets, they want to keep it chained to their house so it doesn't run around, strap a nappy onto it so it doesn't mess around the house, which is completely against that animal's needs and causes immense cruelty and suffering to these animals. I'll show you the photo. So this is the capuchin monkey that I was telling you about. And you can see all of the wounds around his tail there. He had parasites around his eyes. And you can see all of those wounds. That's all caused from the nappy that was applied to the monkey. That's in his inguinal area between his thighs. A lot of the times I would get a call and people would ask, how much would my monkey cost me, for example? But they forget that there's a bigger picture. It, it's not just your monkey. It is getting being prepared for your monkey. There are quite a lot of breeders. I'll be honest, I don't know exactly how many. However, there, there are many, many all over, Pretoria and Gauteng in general. They tend not to educate. I would love to see more education. Um, when it comes to, you know, if they breed, they do sell a lot for monitorial 
values and stuff like that, which I'm, I'm a little bit against that because the thing is, you, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. And I believe do it the right way, you know, educate the people. Don't just sell it for, for monetary profits, no. One of the biggest problems is that anyone can go to a pet shop and buy a pair of monkeys and start breeding them themselves. Monkeys breed uh, very easily in captivity if they haven't been imprinted from a young age. So it's not brain surgery to get these animals to breed. And a lot of unscrupulous people rely on this as a source of extra income, even though it is absolutely abhorrent and completely cruel. And these people um, battery farm these monkeys. They keep adult pairs in cages and they breed them and they pull the babies. Your Breeding monkeys are mostly wild monkeys that has been raised in their colony by their mom, by their dad, by their parents, and they've also helped um, raise their siblings, little brothers and sisters. They need to be experienced. When it comes to breeding a mom as it's in captivity, uh, they breed, gee, so quickly. They can certainly breed every five months. Uh, roughly 146 to 155 days they can actually breed. And when they get going, they can get going and they can breed right through until they're 13, 14 years old. If you have a male vasectomized, then that's great and that can be controlled in that way. We're doing an arranged marriage. There's a, there's a male, there's a female. Let's put you guys together and let's see what happens. These are intelligent animals. It's not to say that the female is automatically going to like the male or the other way around. It's not to say that they're not going to have a fight or two before they accept each other. There's always a dominant monkey. It can be your male or it can be your female. And you have to be very careful. It's a specialized process to get them together and make sure that they're not going to fight. They're not going to attack each other. And they're all going to accept each other. They are going to breed. Like I said, with, if they tame, chances are very slim that they are going to breed. Yo, she's going to, she's going to pop probably any day now. Is it? Yeah. She's only ever had once. And those children are with others at the moment. She's lost her teeth. She's yeah, actually true. very old. A lot of the breeders try and say, oh, it's a really rare type. There's a really rare, it's a slightly blonder capuchin. So they try and make it that it's rarer and build up the hype and then the people think that, 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 that they're getting something extra special, but they're just getting conned. I have people phoning me daily, weekly crying because they've been caught in a scam. Um, harder for them to sell their animals. They're going to think twice about just breeding, breeding, breeding. Whereas now, you can breed, 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 and you just put on a couple of online adverts and the animals will get sold. It's a no-brainer. So if you remove that easy avenue, people will start thinking twice and start hopefully limiting their numbers and realizing that this is not just a quick buck. Maya the Capuchin, she's fine, she's moved her bricks around and she's decorated her own cage. <laughs> um, yes, but she's very clever and no problem with her. Very hardy monkeys, they can live to 40, 45 years old and very, very clever indeed. But she's fine. Maya, Maya, come here baby, come here, come here Mikey, come on. She's only two years old, come here. Yes, come here. Hey, you think you're playful? Hey, hey. <laughs> but she's fine. She's communicating with me by making this lip smacking. Wee are you? Wee are you? Very intrigued, very cautious. Even though she is humanized. She attacked her owners, and that's why she has been donated to our sanctuary. Well, certain provinces do have their permits installed, a holding permit plus transport permits. Um, however, that doesn't really restrict people to what they should and shouldn't do because they can really have free, they can do whatever they want. I wanted permits to be established in Gauteng. I don't know why it hasn't been, but it's been so long now. And I think people are, are, are going to become skeptical and they're scared of losing their their pets or their, their babies, their, their monkeys that give them such joy. So in Gauteng, even though you don't have to have a permit to keep the animal, you have to have, you have, to have a permit to transport any exotic animal. They don't enforce it. 
There's oaks driving around with their monkeys, their marmosets, their snakes all the time. They're operating illegally because they don't have a transport permit. But the government isn't enforcing it, so... The problem with the fact that there's absolutely no permits with exotics now is that it's just a free-for-all. They can literally just decide, wake up one morning, decide it's a great idea and then start doing it. Really you do need to have cages, a specific size cage, you have to have two monkeys, um, there should not be a single pet around because of the disorders and the psychological disorders to mention just a few. So yes, there's got to be somewhere a balance and I'd like to get to it, I just don't quite know how yet. The trade in wild animal and wild animal parts is horrendous and one of the biggest things that we stand to lose is biodiversity internationally. Every single wild animal in every single ecosystem has a part to play and people don't realise that. One needs to protect the species too, so it's very, very difficult. I would say that organisations and people that have the knowledge and the expertise should be in control of that. Again, it's, it's very difficult to try to, but yes, we do need to protect these guys. At the same time, we can't just take them totally out of our world kind of thing because it's not going to be that easy. It's certainly going to be very difficult. You're talking about many, many, many people here. And they are very good owners, but they're also the owners that need to be well educated because their monkey, unfortunately, dies earlier than it should. The wildlife trade internationally and within South Africa is a huge problem and it's not getting better. I do have a problem when it comes to uh, breeders or, or people flying their monkeys in little boxes and things, you know, although they are pretty strict, however they are so pipidach. Uh, these marmosets have a, a metabolic rate of five times higher than ours. So although it is a dark area and it's less stress, um, this, there is still stress, unfortunately, and you don't know how it's handled there uh, at airports and, and docks and things like that. So yes, I would like to see more control, but as far as I know, um, there seems to be, it seems to be pretty strict. If I could have a test or get everybody that would like to acquire a monkey, not one, should be two, but to go through a test, like a multiple choice or something, you know, to be able to gain a bit of knowledge and then maybe get a certificate of some sort to be able to have these monkeys. That would be a far better route to, to go. If you want an animal, get a dog or a cat. There are thousands of unwanted dogs or cats in this country and they, they'll love you. They'll love you regardless and they will love living with you and they will love living in your house. Mama Zets won't. You're going to have to keep them in a cage. You will get bored of them. They will start biting you. You will leave them locked in their cage. They will automatically get sick. You're also contributing to the trade in wild animals just by buying a marmoset because that marmoset's mom and dad are going to sit in the breeder's cage and they're going to carry on breeding them and making more. So the right thing to do is to not be selfish and don't keep marmosets as pets. I would love all my monkeys that goes out to have the perfect home and I enjoy every monkey that goes out that has that and I'm so proud of my mommies and daddies out there. What you're going to start with is what you're going to end with and that's going to be happy memories and it's going to be a family member for the next 16 years of your life.